Uh, I recognise the Wadjuk people as custodians of their culture and of the land on which we live, work, learn and share. I pay my deep respects to the people of the Noongar Nation, in particular all elders past, present and those following in their footsteps. I acknowledge and respect the continuing connection to land, water and sky, and I'm grateful for the special connection to the, the Fremantle Dockers have to this country, especially the spot in which we stand today. I extend this respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples across Australia. Well, thank you everyone for your attendance today. Where would you rather be than admiring some magnificent artwork by the beach on a glorious uh, Fremantle Friday morning? Big thank you to local artist Jacob Butler. Where are you, Jacob? Is he in the room? Um, you've created such an amazing tribute to the Fremantle Football Club players and an organisation I'm not going to mention yet, but I'm going to talk about more in a moment. Um, Jacob, as I understand it, actually started his artistic career sketching Freo players uh, around a little cafe around the corner, um, and that was back in 2014, so it's phenomenal now that his artwork is on display at Bathers Beach, and it's going to make its way around Perth and Western Australia in months to come. Uh, and a big warm welcome to our President Dale Alcock, I think Dale's here with us in the room, and our very own Andy Brayshaw and Hayley Miller. Andy's got a bit of free time at the moment. I must admit I have seen him running laps in his break out at Coburn, and as I understand it, the handicap is slowly starting to head towards scratch at, Re at Royal Fremantle, which we're all really pleased about, of course, <laughs> Andy. Um, Hayley, of course, is busy leading the AFLW in general as a player, I think we all agree, um, but most importantly, our team in the magnificent fashion she does. Important to note that Hayley's got a plane to catch in literally two hours' time to head to Sydney tomorrow. So. If you see her running off at some stage during this press conference, it's not that in a, because of anything you, you all said. Um, and we'd better get a move on with that in mind, Hayley. So, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce and welcome Bankwest as a co-major sponsor of the Fremantle Football Club for the next four years. I think that deserves a round of applause. It's... It's actually more than a welcome to the Frio family. It's actually a welcome back, as Bank Bankwest was previously on board as a major partner in 2004 and 2005. It's an incredibly exciting partnership to rekindle, as we both have clear aims for growth and success in tough markets that don't just stop at the WA border. You'll hear from Bankwest Executive General Manager Jason Chan in a moment, but I wanted to say that Jason and I have spoken about how our organisations share a commitment to strong values and understand the value of sport and having a positive impact on the entire community. At Fremantle, we know just how important strong off-field support is to our hopes of sustained competitiveness on the field and ultimately premiership success. Bank West joined our long-standing and incredibly supportive co-major partner in Woodside and step into the spot that had previously been taken up by Programmed. To that end, and while we've paid tribute many times before, I'd like to again briefly recognise what a tremendous support program has, uh, has provided our club and note that while they'll not be a co-major partner um, in 2023, they remain a significant and key club partner for the 18th successive year. So that's something for us to aim for, Jason. <laughs> Bank West has been a part of WA for 125 years and they're passionate supporters of the WA community and really pleasingly now the Fremantle Football Club. We are, in comparison, a relatively young organisation in our 28th year. However, we have an incredibly rich and important footy heritage and history that dates back well over a century through our parent clubs in East and South Fremantle. We are a hungry and driven challenger brand that is looking to build deep and meaningful roots as an iconic WA organisation as we look to make a splash on the national stage. Funnily enough, that exact same statement can be applied to our new friends and partners in Bankwest. I'm sure I'm also not alone in thinking how fantastic the colours purple and orange come together and we look forward to a long association that begins with this initial four year term. So I'll now hand over to Bankwest Executive General Manager Jason Chan to say a few words. Thanks for that welcome and intro Simon and um, thanks uh, to Dale as well. Uh, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land that we meet on today, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Uh, as Simon said, Bank West is a proud um, WA organisation with 125 years uh, of history within um, WA, and um, it's, it's with great pleasure and excitement um, that I uh, participate in this announcement today of our, of our new partnership. Uh, you know, we're both strongly uh, WA-based organisations with a, a great heritage, uh, with one uh, similar aspiration around that, um, achieving uh, national uh, goals 
So, uh, you know, I'm super, super excited. We've got um, 3,000 WA-based colleagues back in the office. And you know, knowing there's two teams in, in the state, there's probably half of them are, uh, are going to be barracking for this. Um, but you know, this is a really important uh, sponsorship for us in terms of supporting our community. Just with the 3,000 colleagues here, we know how important it is to uh, support the local community here in WA. And part of that, uh, this, this uh, complements our work on financial abuse. Uh, and um, also the support of the RAC um, arena and the Opta Stadium. So, um, you know, I just want to um, again thank Simon um, and Dale for the opportunity. And uh, I guess the, if you haven't had a chance to have a look at the uh, container outside, uh, you know, I, again, I, I agree. Who would have thought um, orange and purple go really well when it really pops? <laughs> and I'm looking forward to cleaning the uh, of those shots in front of the goals, um, you know, with our brand. Uh, so. Um, Probably, I just want to end by again just uh, thanking uh, the club, and I really look forward to uh, barracking uh, for, for the team into the finals next year. No pressure. Fantastic. Uh, uh, Eighteen year. Uh, you can look year. that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much, everyone. Fantastic. Thank you, Jason. Jason and I are happy to take any questions. We we'll, might head to um, Andy. I'm not sure about Haley's uh, capability of answering questions given the, uh, the pending flight, but happy to take any questions for Jason and I at this point. Simon, so. Simon, I guess it's been a, uh, an interesting few days or week on the sort of um, sponsorship land, uh, landscape across the country. Um, your own uh, supporters have uh, raised some concerns about which side you're making this. Now it's with Bankwest, so I guess was there any consultation done with supporter groups and um, I guess on that front you know, in regards to this Bankwest announcement? Yeah, look, we you know, take a, a heck of a lot of uh, feedback and input from our supporter base. We've got 800,000 supporters across the country um, and with that come many and varying views and, and opinions, particularly in the way we play football and, and how we pro uh, progress on field. But also, um, you know, as organisations now, clearly football's our primary focus. But we know, you know, we uh, are looked upon uh, as key societal issues. So, you know, not specific to this example, but we're an organisation that like, uh, is more than happy to take on the opinions and, and input and views. Uh, and then, you know, our board in particular, led by Dale, then look to make the best possible decisions we, pack, we can on behalf of our club. To that extent, has there been any shift in position in regards to the partnership with Woodside, uh, given that there's some high profile uh, supporters that have raised issues with that? Uh, no, at this point in time, Woodside's contracted until the end of 2023, so it's over 12 months away. I understand the, the topical nature of it at this point in time, but um, we'll work through that with Woodside at the appropriate time. How important are these arrangements to you as the club? I mean, you heard the Premier say that if these things aren't in place, then players need to take pay cuts. I mean, what is the reality of these arrangements for clubs and players? Yeah, they're, they're absolutely critical. You know, we're in an incredibly competitive landscape, the most competitive sporting competition in the world in, in reality and it's, it's, it's a ruthless environment and, and everything makes a difference, the smallest thing can make a difference. So to have long standing support of your corporate partners is absolutely critical um, and that's not going to change any time soon. Okay, well, it's, it's all the boxes, I guess. Yeah, we couldn't be more excited. As Jason said, we think there's some incredible alignment between the two organisations. Um, you know, both hungry to succeed and, and you know, continue building the, the iconic roots that we have in our hometown, but also see what we can do from a national perspective as well too. Um, and the brands you know, connect incredibly well, but I must say also um, Jason and his whole team have been phenomenal to work with. It's been you know, a long time in discussion and you know, a, a hell of a lot that's been worked through, but you've seen today as a kickoff um, with the launch and the work that's been done. We're incredibly excited to work with, with such a strong consumer facing brand and seeing what we can do to, to assist. And I, I joked it initially, but initial four year term, and we want to make sure we provide as much value as we possibly can to Bankwest to make sure it's a, a really long partnership. How much consultation do you have with the players? Because we've seen the players uh, in other codes, <coughs> sort of, I guess, imposing the, the sort of platforms that they have mm. on uh, decisions by their own organisations, how much consultation do you undertake with the player groups? Yeah, we take feedback from all of our key stakeholders and obviously our players are you know, right up there in terms of importance from a stakeholder perspective. Um, you know, you're obviously you, you're referring to the, that element of climate action sustainability is a key societal issue and we understand that and we understand it's an incredibly important issue and a complex one. And we've worked with our playing group on a sustainability plan that we released um, earlier in the year and um, a key cohort of our playing group had real interest and input, and input into that and um, we continue to and consult with them with really important decisions that we make. Simon, it's pretty nostalgic 
sort of announcement today was barely ever yep. up on the screens. How did it come about? Yeah, you're right. It's fantastic to look back at that. I talked about the fact that we're a relatively young organisation, but we're incredibly proud given the, the deep roots and history we've got from a football point perspective through south and east. But even in our 28 years, there's been so many amazing things that have happened. We haven't quite reached the heights that we've wanted to on field, but we're, we're really driven and determined to do that. Um, so to look back at a partnership that did occur in 04 and 05 and to rekindle that's really special. So there wasn't any direct link to that time and now. It was really two organisations that managed to come together, understand that there's some really shared, important shared values and objectives and things that we think we can do together um, to help each other significantly. So, you know, the fact that there was that history of it, I think is a nice added bonus, but we're really looking forward to the future and, and the impact that we can have with each other. And I guess to have the sponsorship across both AFL and AFL to be programs is exciting, the fact we see um, the excitement in both. Yeah, absolutely. I, Jason and I were just chatting on the way in. I don't know if you wanted to mention anything, Jason, but um, I've, you know, I've been repeatedly on the record as to how important our AFLW team, I think the AFLW competition in, in general is just such a critical part of, of our sport now um, and forms so much of who we're going to be as a, as a code in the future. But from our club's perspective, um, we're just such a more complete organisation because of it. And... You guys all, from the press perspective, would have dealt with Hayley plenty of times and you know, the, the, the type of individuals that we're lucky enough to have in our AFLW team just um, is a blessing on our organisation. So um, it made absolutely sense, and I won't speak on behalf of Jason, but the natural link that they were going to be co-major partner of both our men's and W team wasn't even a, a discussion point. <laughs> Anything you want to add on that, Jason? No, no. I, I, um yeah, as uh, Simon just said, you know, uh, wasn't even a consideration. It was definitely uh, both teams uh, were, were uh, top of mind when we went into this, and uh, when we reflect back, it's, it's that uh, iconic WA brands that we want to bring together and grow the community. And um, part of that is developing the uh, women's um, team and league here in WA. And um, you know that uh, footy is such a passionate thing um, in this town. Uh, you know, we, and we just want to be able to facilitate that enjoyment that everyone has in the community. Hayley's looking forward to a sharp raid on the home lane as well. So <laughs> Hayley's going to leave. Thanks, Millsy, for coming along. Fantastic. Good luck in Sydney. If there's not any more questions for me, folks, I might throw over to Andy, our reigning AFL MVP and All-Australian and DOIC medalist. Um, he, inserts, he requires that to be inserted before he's introduced at any time now um, to answer any questions you might have from a footy point of view. Jump in there, Brian. What is the handicap? Uh, 8.1 and plummeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Um, and we have seen players uh, sort of asserting uh, their authority, what authority they do have in regards to sponsorships uh, recently. Is it something you've ever given much thought to? Um, me personally, not, not really. I, I sort of focus on my main role at the club, which is playing footy and trying to win games. Um, and I'm of, of the opinion that the people upstairs, the administrators, that's sort of their area and um, I have full faith in them and um, yeah, really comfortable with where we're at um, as a club and um, excited with our new partnership. Do you think that the orange and the purple goes well? Yeah, I think it looks alright. And, and the mural shaky, you did an awesome job mate, it looks yeah. so good. Um, and can you understand how some players though would come forward, you know, it is the branding, it is what you're wearing and representing, can you understand why sometimes they might voice a concern? Yeah, well, like I touched on, everyone has their own opinion and um, we're a massive club with a huge supporter base and, and a lot of major stakeholders and um, like we touched on, the players have, have their voice and there um, are a lot of different opinions and people are coming out and um, speaking their mind, but credit to them, they can you know, come out and um, say what they have to, but yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm really comfortable personally. Um, former coach Ross the Boss uh, back in action potentially with St Kilda. Have you got a favourite memory of him and is it potentially good to see him back in action? Yeah, very happy for him. I sort of had a feeling that he'd be back at some point. Um, yeah, my first couple of years at the club was with Ross and um, absolutely loved it. Um, he taught me a lot of life lessons um, being just an 18 year old schoolboy coming into the, into the league. and. Um, no, I think St Kilda would be very lucky to have him. Um, one of my mates, Max Kings, actually just rang me yesterday and missed him, but yeah, I think he wants to get a feel for what Ross is like, but um, too many stories of, um, yeah, some, some of the all-time sprays when I was a little bit young, but um, yeah, playing my first game under him, um, some of the chats I had with him um, when I was, yes, 
sort of just finding my way in the AFL, um, he really put me on the right path, I think, and I owe a lot of my um, football success to him. Can you summarise your advice to, to Max Kip? Uh, put your head down, work really hard. Um, <laughs> but no, he, he values hard work and um, he loves seeing people that are as invested in football as, as he is. So, yeah, my advice to Max will just be work, work your ass off, mate. <laughs> what are his strengths as a coach? We hear, we hear tales of what they are. What are they for um, I think he's got a really good ability to bring the best out um, in players. Um, like I touched on before, when I first came to the club, I probably didn't really know what being a professional footballer meant, and um, he was able to yeah, show me the path of, of what it takes to, to really bring the best out of yourself, and um, he pushes his players every day to be their best versions of themselves, whether that's training um, on the track, in the gym, being focused during meetings. Um, he's really big on off-field as well, so um, had a really important focus on studying and um, pursuing stuff outside of football as well, but yeah, he's definitely the sort of coach that will just... Um, get the best out of you no matter what it is. Back running with a few guys at the club, what's inspired you to get back into it so soon? Don't you just want a break? Uh, yeah, there's always that hunger. Um, I guess we've got our first taste of what finals is like. Um, I absolutely loved it and speaking on behalf of the playing group, that's where we want to be um, from now on. And um, yeah, once you get a taste for that, you sort of just want to be right back there. So there's a lot of players that um, yeah, I've been back at the club training really hard and um, yeah, we've got our sights set on, ne on next year already. Have you had much of a chance to catch up with uh, Luke Jackson training with him yet or how's he faring? Uh, I haven't caught up with him in person yet but congratulated him and, and the other guys that have come to the club and um, yeah, obviously my brother Angus had a fair bit to do with him and he was actually um, living at my house. I'm pretty sure he was in my bedroom actually. He was, uh, <laughs> he, he my, yeah, my, my family were a um, host family for him and um, so yeah, I've got to know him a little bit and really excited to be able to um, work with him closely and another exciting talent in the midfield especially. We've got a really young group that um, are, are extremely driven so hopefully that'll be the group uh, moving forward for the next 10 or so years so it's really exciting. What do you make of the club's wheelings and dealings during the track period? Uh, Jagger as well to the, to the midfield. Um, there's lots to work with there I suppose. Yeah, huge, um, huge additions to the club and Definitely wasn't expecting Jager and um, yeah, it sort of all happened really quickly and i um, very excited that we've got this, this amount of talent wanting to come into the club and um, yeah, for someone of you know, Luke Jackson, Jager O'Meara, um, Josh Colbert, these guys that you know, want to be a part of the, the success that we're trying to aim for and um, yeah, it's a really exciting time to be at the footy club. Uh, everyone that's here just wants to be the best they can be and um, wants to see us succeed, I guess. What's going through your mind during the trade period? I mean, you see Luke Jackson come through the door and on the final day, so too is Jager. How exciting is it when you're sitting there watching it all? <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a really special feeling and um, I think we've created a culture um, at the footy club where people are wanting to come to our, to our organisation and it's really exciting uh, to, see, to see guys of this um, amount of talent and um, character that we want to want to see in our club. That they're, they're, they're knocking the door down. They want to come here, and um, it just shows that we're in a really good space as a, as a football club. And uh, they're definitely going to help us in 2023 and, and moving forward. Uh, just on Josh Corbett, officially the most well-mannered person I think I've ever met. And apart from Harbor. apart from me. Apart from me, <laughs> yeah. um, but I think you mentioned that you might have had a dinner with him and, and Caleb. And I guess what was the conversation like, and you know how did you sort of market free doctors to get him across the line? Uh, yeah, so we went out had a chat just before um, he was signed officially and um, he was pretty much just picking our brains what day to day looks like. Um, we were pumping up Fremantle and Perth um, as a place to live as well because he hasn't really been over here so um, but we were pretty much just I guess driving home that you know we're a younger group of players who are um, all really driven towards the one goal and um, we're almost like a family away from home so he, he's going to be moving across Australia but he's going to have a family here and um, we're all working really hard and just trying to make each other better. Um, yeah, myself, Caleb and Will Brody and all of our partners were there as well which I think was really important. Um, his, his partner got to meet some of the other partners and um, yeah, just know that they're not going to be alone and that they're, they're coming to a really strong organisation that's um, really fa family oriented and um, hard working.